But today we're talking about clients who are resistant. So hypnosis or coaching clients who resist whatever techniques or methods that you're using with them so that they can get a mindset breakthrough or emotional healing breakthrough uh, in your one-to-one programs. And so here's something to really consider regarding these um, resistant clients, right? If you have a client who is resistant, um, maybe they can't visualize, maybe it's just difficult for them to see the future. Maybe it's uh, clients who don't wear clients who wear your traditional techniques or methods uh, don't really work for. Um, it maybe has worked for a lot of your clients, but you have, well, you know, a few of those clients who uh, just doesn't respond as well compared to your other clients with regards to the techniques that you're using. So what you really want to consider with these clients is, you know, this concept of hypervigilance, right? This may or may not be applicable to your client, but I can tell you that if they're resisting something, it means that somehow their self-protective mechanisms are up. So they're going to have some sort of defense mechanism. Um, And if someone is hypervigilant, maybe they have just undergone a lot of trauma um, or they have some trust uh, trust issues. Um, It's not really their fault that they're um, resisting, right? It's not really, um, they're not trying to spite you or piss you off. Um, It's just a coping mechanism that they may or may not be aware of that they have. So for you as a hypnotist and as a coach, it's really um, vital for you to really look at it in this form, like why are they resistant uh, instead of stressing about how they're not resistant and, you know, adding more things for them um, and really just, you know, trying overly too hard and overstimulating them, that might not be the best uh, case scenario for them, right? Because if someone's already hypervigilant and you're trying to overly force techniques on them because it hasn't worked uh, for them in the past, that's not really going to help them, right? That's just going to increase the resistance more. So really look at it as um, at a hypervigilant aspect. And really, this really clicked for me one time when I was in yoga, right? Um, re- like in yoga, some instructors would say, now close your eyes if you feel safe to do so. Uh, some instructors do that. Um, and that was really interesting for me because, you know, I'm someone who like, if I'm in yoga, I will be closing my eyes, but also realizing that, you know, some people might not feel very safe or comfortable closing their eyes in a room full of people on their mats um, and people that they don't necessarily know, whether it be their newbies or it doesn't really matter, right? Uh, some people just won't feel safe closing their eyes because, Um, it's a it's a defense mechanism right like it's they don't feel safe for some reason and a lot of that has to do with you know whatever um, past they've had right so if you really look at it that way if you're using hypnosis or NLP techniques a lot of them involved you involve you asking your clients to close your eyes even if you're doing you know breath work or any other type of Reiki or healing modalities with your clients and if you involve them closing uh and it involves them closing uh their eyes then for some clients this will trigger a wall of defense Um, And they may or may not be aware of it. So this is just something to be mindful of um, because, you you know, this shift really was powerful for me in in saying, oh, like some people don't feel safe closing their eyes. Um, And so and, and what do most healing modalities have? And even meditation, asking the client or the person, the student to close their eyes, right, which may not be the best for them. Um, and, and this is just like a really big concept. And this is exactly why I love uh, conversational hypnosis so much, because it just starts with a conversation. Um, clients are not, um, clients don't have to have their eyes closed because some clients won't feel safe. And a lot of the times in conversation, their eyes are open, but they're still getting massive breakthroughs, even better breakthroughs than the eyes closed hypnosis modality that I used to be trained in. So um, just food for thought here with regards to these clients, um, 
sometimes it's just these very simple things uh, that we neglect that can actually make a big difference. So if you have a hypervigilant client or a resistant client, why don't you just start things off with a conversation as soon as you have that initial session with them, uh, get them to warm up that way. Because if you just, you know, go into that Zoom call um, and, you know, the minute they they talk to you and say you're, you know, you're your intro at the beginning and then say okay close your eyes they might not feel uh, ready for that consciously or unconsciously so by allowing yourself to really get into that hypnotic interview really start that conversation and be present with them that will help them ease into it um and they may or may not need to close their eyes right so just something to think about especially if you're using modalities that um where their eyes need to be closed, even in meditations, right? Um, you don't have to really close your eyes to be in a meditative state. You can just have a really soft um, eye gaze and you can still be in a meditative and hypnotic state. Um, so something to think about. And I hope this helps. Try this out for one of your clients. Maybe don't ask them to close their eyes. Maybe just allow them to visualize or do whatever it is that or heal based on their eyes open, especially the resistant clients, um, and see if that works for you. I would be very interested to know if that does. Um, otherwise, um, if you have any questions, make sure to ask and I will see you soon.